Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. It's a little after 7 a.m., around 7, 19 a.m., and thank you so much for staying with us. I'm going to be talking to a gynecologist and an obstetrician because this is our health and you segment, and basically, well, body and you segment, and that focuses on just educating you about your body and about things that can help you promote a really, really healthy lifestyle. And I'm interested about this topic because we're going to be speaking about women's menstrual cycle and how the vaccine may or may not affect it. So on the line with me, I have Dr. Shireen Kalu, who is a gynecologist, and she has been practicing for 30 years. Dr. Kalu, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning to you. How and are you? Morning, and Tobago. I am very well, thank you. I hope you're good as well. Yes, I am. I'm actually good because I really, really want to just jump into this topic. Um, so I know that um, we are talking about, you know, the vaccine and its effect on the menstrual cycle. But first of all, what is a normal menstrual cycle for a woman? And even so, what differs between, let's say, a 28-day cycle and a 30-day cycle? Okay, so there is what we consider a normal cycle when we do biology way back in high school. And that is, it can vary between 21 days and 35 days. Meaning that if you count from the beginning of a period and you, you, you count until the beginning of another period, that would be how many days your cycle is. And it varies from person to person. It depends on their genetic makeup. It depends on environmental factors. But a normal is considered not just the periods between a cycle, but also the flow, the amount of blood that you, that you pass every month. It, it should be you know, not a heavy flow. So we ask patients how many pads they use per cycle and also how many days it would last. So if a period is going on for more than a week, then we consider that to be abnormal and it needs to be investigated. So these are some of the things we look for in a normal period, not just the length of the cycle. Right. And in terms of some of the irregularities, because we know that there are some women who face Ill irregularities with their cycle, what can cause someone to have an irregular um, cycle or an irregular period? So there are a host of reasons and hence the reason why we tell you you need to check your gynecologist if you may be seeing an irregular cycle over a three month period. Then you need to check your gynecologist to look for whatever possible causes. So if we go back to basic physiology, we know that the entire cycle is controlled by the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, the pituitary gland, and the ovary. And based on this, we call it the axis, the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis. And based on this, we would be able to determine hormonal changes or physical changes that can affect your menstrual cycle. So, you know, each cycle that comes, there are hormones that are released. So very basic, we have estrogen in the first part of the cycle. Um, it increases the point where we get ovulation or release of the eggs. And 14 days after that, the progesterone levels go up and that um, if you don't have a, a pregnancy, fertilization and pregnancy, you get a menstrual period. So that would be 14 days after ovulation. So if we're looking at causes, the most, most common causes that we see in our country, and you will hear this over and over again, polycystic ovaries. I'm sure you've been hearing that. Yes. Polycystic ovaries come at the, at the, at the top of the list. Um, stress, lifestyle factors can cause period irregularities. Um, if you take any birth control pill and you miss a pill, that can happen as well. If you have uterine fibroids, which are growths in the womb, if you have polyps, which are growths that come from the mouth of the womb and in the lining of the womb, that can cause it as a condition called endometriosis. And that is where you get deposits of the lining of the womb and other areas. You have infections can cause it. Um, I could go on and on. There are medications that can cause it. Um, if you're taking certain medications, you can get irregular period and you may not realize that if you're taking a pill, it can affect it as well. So if you're on thyroid medication, for instance, or if you're on steroids for asthma, you can have irregular period. Um, also, antipsychotics can cause period irregularity. So there's a host of problems that you need to um, look at weight right. changes, pregnancy. Yeah, I could go on and on. <laughs> um, Dr. Kaloon, I'd like you to go on and on, but unfortunately, we don't have much time. I know. And I really, really want to get to this, though. I, I've been looking at a thread on social media where a lot of women have taken the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine, and they're seeing irregularities um, in their cycle. And I've also noticed that 
this is not just happening locally, but a lot of women are also coming out and sharing that same trend worldwide. Um, do you know of any cases where the COVID-19 vaccine could affect a woman's cycle? So you see, that that's a very interesting question because having said what I just said with regard to um, irregular periods being caused by a host of other problems, yes, we have been seeing what we claim to be an association of period irregularity. So yes, I have had patients call me and say, Doc, I missed the period, or Doc, my period came heavier, or it came a little scanty, or in even menopausal women. There are some who say that they bleed after menopause. However, we cannot just assume that it's a vaccine that may have caused it. Whether or not it's a vaccine, these bleeding issues need to be investigated because you don't want to miss pathology that can be a problem. But yes, I, I did come across a lot of what we call an anecdotal um, stories about the period irregularities. There have not been any confirmed studies, and this is difficult to study, obviously, because there's so many factors, the stress-related factors as well, that can cause the period irregularity. However, it's nice to know if a patient is getting a vaccine that she might be given the, the idea before if you do get any menstrual irregularities but it persists right. please check your doctor because we're not confirmed in the the cause of it yeah and actually dr kulu you you i think you make a very interesting point which is why i wanted to talk to us or, or have the viewers listening on this conversation because i think a lot of women are just saying that you know they're taking the vaccine and they're getting this um irregular cycle but they're not also taking in the other factors as well that can cause that irregularity. And I'm glad you're here to uh, share that with us. Do you know, though, however, Dr. Kalu, about any cases where there might have been maybe, you know, severe hospitalizations or severe illness as a result of taking the vaccine? Um, with regard to bleeding, I'm assuming that you're asking. Yes, yes. So, yes. I personally don't know of any. I did not come across any cases in my, in my reading but again, it would be difficult to prove whether the vaccine is what may cause bleeding problems. So if you have a patient who may have had a heavy bleed or hemorrhage, as we would call it, and she suffers with anemia as a result of the bleeding, she will be hospitalized, yes. But whether it's because of the vaccine or not, we don't know for sure. So there, was, there were two, two ladies in the U.S. who started, who, I think they put a Twitter out in January, that's Lee and Clancy. And they got a huge response, I think over 140,000 people who claimed they had irregular cycles after taking the vaccine. And that is what caused this whole investigation, if you want to say, based on the fact that they experienced it themselves as females. And then they put it out there and people then started making comments and putting their life stories on the um, account and making comments about what may or may not be. So it's, it's worth investigating and it would be nice for us as medical professionals and as uh, patients who may have gotten a job, what to expect, what may happen. And you know, is there a link at all with the vaccine and bleeding issues? And finally, um, Dr. Kalu, I was doing a bit of research and this question kept popping up a lot. Will the COVID-19 affect you, you know, you getting pregnant in any way or is it going to, you know, cause you to have a miscarriage or anything like that? Just to clear up some misinformation so, that might yeah. be in the public domain, thanks. Of course, and this has come up time and time again. And I would like to say emphatically, based on all the research that has come up so far, the COVID-19 vaccine does not affect your fertility. It does not cause an increase in miscarriages. All the studies have shown that the miscarriage rates are basically the same as it would before the vaccine. Um, so that no, the fertility and miscarriage rates are not affected by the vaccine. Great. Dr. Kalu, thank you so, so much for joining us. It was so nice to have you on to clear up any misinformation. And you may need to look out for a call for me probably next week because I would love to dive into this conversation a bit more. But thank you again for joining us. And guys, that was Dr. Shireen Kalu and Objin who gave us some information about how the COVID-19 vaccine may or may not affect your menstrual cycle. Remember, you are tuned into the Now Morning Show. Stick around. We'll be right back.